Hey, what is going on, guys? Root of the Null here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, let's get the Windows command line fired up, along with Notepad++, Plus, and we can start some cool. Okay. Now, in the last video, we took a look at uh, local scope inside functions, and we were using the commands setLocal and endLocal at the beginning and end of each function that we created. Now, uh, when we've been working with scripts in the past, we would always be running our scripts inside the uh, cmd.exe, our, our command line, our shell, our terminal, our console, whatever you'd like to call it, but normally our variables, our variables would be left over after our script had finished being executed. Now, uh, I'll show you guys this right now. If we create a new script, I'll call mine uh, script.bat. Okay. Do the add echo off. Go to main. Create main. Go ahead and go to the end of file. <clears throat> and now, if we didn't have the set local and end local things, and we set global var equals exist equals existing, and if we went ahead and quickly uh, echo, actually, creating a variable, <clears throat> and if we ran this script, quick and easy, it says creating a variable. Now if we use our set command to see what happened here, we can go ahead and look for global variable, and sure enough, we'll find it. See? Here it is right here. We've created a global variable, and since we haven't supplied any local scope to, uh, to our actual script, the command line interpreter is still going to be able to work with this later. So we can actually just go ahead and echo global variable and that sort of thing. We see we have access to existing. So now this could be kind of convenient if you'd like it when you're when you're writing a program because you can debug and uh, actually try and figure out things that are wrong with your program. You have access to the variables and you can keep track of them during runtime. Now some of you may not want this because if you're trying to run a program over and over and over again, you want to continue to work with the same constant variable. You don't want to have to worry about it being manipulated by something that the system had already been keeping track of in an earlier version of your program. So, what we should be doing is, of course, using our setLocal and endLocal keywords. Now, if we can set a new variable, uh, local var, and we'll set this to non-existent, because it's very likely you won't find this variable. So let's clear the screen, and we'll write script, and now we can use set and look for a local variable. But uh, I'm thinking we won't find it. Let's see, L, 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 let's see, there's L right here, local app data, and uh, log on server, and then we just hop right on down to N. So there, uh, there is no local var. In fact, if we try and go ahead and echo this out, we're going to have a problem. Echo local variable, but it's not existing yet. <laughs> we really are actually echoing out the string local variable because it's not being interpreted as a variable because it doesn't find it. It is existing only inside of our script. And the thing is, we're using the set local and end local uh, things just like we used in the last function, the, I'm sorry, the last video. <laughs> wow, that's a completely wrong word. But in this video, we're using them inside of our main function, just like we did in the last video. But this time, when we take a look at the variables outside of the script and actually inside the shell, they don't exist. And that's because we've supplied all these variables to be local to this script and this script alone. But it's only because it's inside the main function, remember. The main function is what's actually happening and running when you run your program. Because we've set it up up here, go to main. All right. Now, that's, that's pretty simple to understand. I mean, at least I think so. When you're using local variables, your variables are local. That's that's all that matters. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty s simple and straightforward. But hey, thank you guys for watching. Though I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a little nice little tidbit if you're trying to trying to debug your program and maybe you maybe you do want to see your variables in the shell. Maybe you don't. So here's a scenario where you can try and fix that. Thank you guys for watching. Though I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you, it'd be nice if you could like the video, especially if you did enjoy it. <laughs> that usually means a lot to me. It, it warms my heart. It tickles my heart. And if you could leave me a comment, let me know what you guys think. Maybe of this video, maybe of the entire series. Uh, it could be anything. But thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.